Ya, I mean, okay. Lama juga kan, dalam seminggu lebih eh tak jumpa sebab mau saya buat offline lah kelas uh, sebab saya ada beberapa tugasan. Okay, so mohon maaf lah saya tak dapat buat online kelas uh, hari tu. Okay, jadi uh, kita dah masuk chapter 4. Saya dah um, share my teaching video hari tu. Jadi hari ni kita continue sahajalah ya. Yeah. Okay, um, so kita recap sikit lah ya. Yeah. Um, so market equilibrium ni is a condition when uh, equilibrium uh, when quantity demanded equals to quantity supply. So bila quantity demanded equals to quantity supply bermaksud market equilibrium tu tercapai lah. Okay, so bila equilibrium quantity, uh, bila market equilibrium is achieved so harga dan quantity tidak akan berubah. Ya, yeah, the, there will be no tendency for the price and quantity to change. Okay, so kalau kita lihat pada analisis ni, pada table ni, uh, equilibrium tercapai apabila quantity demanded equals to quantity supplied, 6 units. Ya, yeah, and the equilibrium price is 3 ringgit. Okay, so apa berlaku kalau harga itu less than the equilibrium price? Kalau harga di bawah harga equilibrium, so berlaku masalah shortage dan apabila harga di atas yang yeah, more than the equilibrium price berlakulah masalah surplus. Okay. And yelah ya yeah, macam mana kita nak lukis the equilibrium point. Ya yeah, the market equilibrium. Jadi uh, now kita untuk chapter 4 ni kita belajar kita akan combine supply and demand together menjadikan dia sebagai market. So dalam chapter 2 kita belajar supply demand individually. So dalam chapter 4 kita perlu combine both demand and supply in order to find for the market equilibrium. So this is the equilibrium price and quantity and uh, this is the analysis lah untuk market equilibrium. Alright. So hari ini kita akan masuk uh, effect of changes in demand and supply on equilibrium price and quantity. Okay macam saya kata tadi, once market equilibrium is achieved, so harga dan quantity tidak akan berubah. Ya, yeah? tetapi apabila demand berubah atau quant atau supply berubah atau kedua-dua demand dan supply berubah then only equilibrium akan berubah. Okay? So there will be uh, so you need to apply apa yang dah belajar dalam chapter 2 dalam this chapter lah. Ya yeah, dalam this part. Okay? The things that you need to to remember adalah the determinants of supply, determinants of demand. Apakah faktor-faktor menyebabkan demand curve untuk shift? Apakah faktor-faktor yang menyebabkan supply curve to shift? So basically there are three, three situations di mana the demand curve shift and supply constant the supply shift, the supply curve shift and demand constant and both the, the demand and supply curve shift simultaneously. Okay, so dia ada condition atau situasi di mana demand curve sahaja yang shift right or left tetapi supply tak berubah. Ada juga situasi di mana supply sahaja yang berubah ya yeah, shift right or left tetapi demand constant dan ada juga situasi di mana both demand dan supply shift simultaneously. Okay. So kita tengok one by one. So this is the situation when demand increases and supply constant. Kita tengok dulu kepada situasi. Ya dia kata sini suppose there is increase in consumer's income level. So bila income increases, okay so dia tanya what happened to the demand for normal good. So kita tahu income ni adalah determinants of demand. Okay. Jadi dia akan affect demand curve. So when income increases, the demand curve for normal good will increase. Yeah, the demand will increase and the demand curve will shift to the right. So sebelum kita nak tahu apakah efek dia, kita kena sketch lah. Sketch. So the initial condition adalah supply here, D0 here. So S here and D0. This is the equilibrium point. And this is the initial condition. So the price is P0, quantity is at Q0. After the shift, the demand curve shift to the right from D0 to D1. So there will be new equilibrium point at this point. Supply, if they equate ataupun they intersect dengan demand yang baru, D1. So the new equilibrium point is at E1. So what we can say is that the price increases from P0 to P1 and quantity increases from Q0 to Q1. 
So the effect after the shift ini, kita tidak boleh memorize, kita tidak boleh hafal tetapi kita boleh sketch. So nak dapatkan dia punya result, kita kena sketch baru kita tahu apa yang berlaku kepada harga dan kuantiti selepas shift. Right? Okay. So ini situasi kedua. ya. Yeah. Suppose there is increase in the price of car. So what happened to the demand for petrol? So when the price of car increases, the demand for petrol decrease. Sebab car and petrol adalah complementary goods. So the supply curve will shift from D0 to D1. Shift to the left. Okay. So this is the initial condition. Price is at P0. Quantity is at Q0. Okay. So bila demand curve shift to the left, there will be no equilibrium at E1. So what happened to the price? Price reduce from P0 to P1 and quantity reduce from Q0 to Q1. Alright. And then kita tengok supply. Supply increase demand constant. Contohnya, suppose the cost of production decreases. So cost of production ni kita dah tahu dia adalah determinant of supply. So dia affect supply sahaja demand constant. So when the cost of production decreases, so the supply of goods will increase. Yeah. Kalau situasi sini cloth. So when the cost reduce, the supply increase. So supply curve will shift to the right. So from SO, they shift to the right, to S1. So apakah effect after the shift? The price reduces from P0 to P1 and quantity increases from Q0 to Q1. Okay, sama juga. Yang ni situasi kalau supply decrease and demand constant. Okay, contohnya suppose that is bad weather. Um, so the supply of vegetables will decrease. So supply shift to the, supply curve shift to the left. So what happened? Price increases from P0 to P1 and quantity decreases from Q0 to Q1. Okay. Right. Itu kalau situasi di mana salah satu curve yang shift. Sama ada demand atau supply. So ini pula situasi di mana both demand and supply curve shift. Okay. So dia akan ada dua situasi. Di mana kita tengok di sini. Suppose there is an increase in taste and preference of chocolate cake. So taste and preference adalah determinants of demand. Jadi bila taste increases, demand pun increase. And at the same time di sini, there is reduction in cost. So bila cost reduce, supply pula increase. So dia akan affect both demand and supply. So demand curve shift from D to D1 and supply curve shift to the right from S to S1. So di manakah new intersection? So the new intersection adalah S at S1 dengan D1 di mana E1 adalah new equilibrium. So what happened? Price will remain unchanged tetapi quantity increases. Okay? So make sure that shift ini adalah sama proportion. Jaraknya sama dengan shift di sini. Okay? Sama juga soalan ni. Kita tengok pula soalan ni lah ya. Yeah. Contoh, there is a reduction in demand for traditional Malay cookies. Ya, yeah, kuih raya. Reduce in demand. So demand curve shift to the left. But at the same time, the supply increases. Sebab cost reduce. So supply pula increase. Supply shift to the right. So demand shift to the left. Supply shift to the right at the same time. So the new equilibrium at E1 here. So S1 intersect dengan D1. Jadi what happened? Price reduce from P to P1 and quantity remain unchanged. Okay. So ini adalah situasi both demand and supply curve shift at the same proportion, jarak yang sama. Now, kita ada satu lagi di mana shift sama kerana shift, ya, yeah, shift both demand and supply curve ni shift together tetapi at different proportion, jarak yang tidak sama. Okay, untuk textbook boleh refer page 105 sehingga 108. 105 until 108. Okay, boleh refer di situ.
Okay, saya juga share dalam WhatsApp group lah. Okay, so kita tengok page 105, combination 1. Demand increases, supply increase. Tengok paragraph 2. Ya, yeah, paragraph 2. If the increase in demand is less than the increase in supply. Demand increase, supply increase tetapi shift in demand itu smaller than the shift in supply. Kita tengok figure 4.4b. Nampak tak demand curve shift from D0 to D2 tetapi the shift is smaller. And the shift in supply SO to S1 the shift is greater. Okay. So di manakah equilibrium yang baru E2. Ya yeah, at E2 jadi price reduce quantity increase. Tetapi kalau kita boleh conclude kita boleh kata the change in price is smaller than the change in quantity. The change in price is smaller than the change in quantity. Okay. Boleh juga lihat combination 3. Cuba tengok combination 3 page 107. Okay paragraph 2. Ya. Yeah. If increase in demand is less than the decrease in supply. Demand increase. Demand shift to the right tetapi smaller. Eh, supply shift to the left tetapi greater. So demand shift to the right, ya yeah, kecil. Supply shift to the left tetapi besar. So new intersection adalah at E2. So apa berlaku? Price increases, quantity reduce. Tetapi the change in price is greater than the change in quantity. Okay? Boleh faham tak? Jadi you can practice lah, you can practice. Play around with the, with the situation, play around with the uh, market equilibrium. So you have to practice. Baru boleh uh, mahir lah, baru boleh mahir. Jadi jawapan ataupun result after the shift tidak boleh kita memorize. Kita perlu sketch. Kita perlu lukis sendiri. Okay? Right. Okay. Right. Cuba buat soalan ini. Eh, question one. Suppose there is increase in income. What would be the effect on equilibrium price and quantity on normal good? Tadi kita dah bagi contoh kan. Boleh buat juga sekali lagi. So income increases what happen to the normal good and what happen to inferior good. Lukis cash dulu diagram and then explain. Question 2, suppose there is increase in the price of substitute goods. Contohnya increase in the price of tea. So bila price of tea increases, what happen to the demand for coffee? Okay. And question 3, suppose there is increase in the price of complementary good. Yeah, price of car. So when the price of car increases, what happen to the demand for petrol? Pun tadi ada kan? Okay. So cuba buat sketch. Right. And then explain. Uh, sedikit. Okay. Explain sedikit apa yang berlaku selepas the shift. Right. Saya bagi dalam 10 minit and then kita discuss. Right. Madam. Ya. Yeah. Dia kena buat yang macam shift tu lah. Yang Ya. Yeah, buat market equilibrium. Ya yeah, betul. Oh okay.
Okey. Semua macam mana? Okey boleh? Jawab. Pening, pening. Eh, hey, kenapa pening pula? Okey, yang lain okey tak? Bolehlah, madam. Tak berapa faham sangat. Tak faham. Okey, uh, awak baca tak yang ni? Yang dekat ni? Tengok balik tak slides ni? Macam ni kan? Soalan satu tu kan? Soalan satu ni kan yang ni kan? Betul tak? Betul tak? Ya. Yeah. 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 Jadi dia kata kalau income increase apa berlaku kepada demand untuk normal good? Okay so kalau demand uh, apa ni income increase demand untuk normal good akan in increase. So awak lukis dulu S dengan D0 tu. S dengan D0. Cari equilibrium tu semua. Label. Lepas tu baru awak buat the shift. So lepas shift apa berlaku? Intersection supply and demand yang baru. Dekat sini. Betul tak? Okay. So itulah harga yang baru dan kuantiti yang baru. So apa efek after the shift? Price increases, quantity in increase. Okay. Yang tu okay tak? Boleh. Okay, untuk soalan yang uh, boleh tengok macam mana saya uh, tunjuk contoh nak explain tu Sama je macam dekat sini Okay saya dah, di, saya dah share dalam whatsapp group Cuba tengok okay uh, Lukis macam mana saya lukis tu and then awak explain Okay so when income increases the demand for normal good increase So the demand curve will shift to the right from D0 to D1. Okay. So what happened? After the shift, cari equilibrium yang baru. So after the shift, the price increases from P0 to P1 and quantity increases from Q0 to Q1. Okay. Sama juga untuk soalan yang yang bawah tu. When income increases, the demand for inferior good decrease. Jadi the demand curve akan shift ke mana? Shift to the left. Yang macam saya lukis yang bawah tu. Okay so awak buatlah explanation yang sama macam saya explain dekat atas. Boleh faham tak? Okay so the demand curve will shift to the left or leftward from D0 to D1. And after that the price reduces from P0 to P1 and quantity reduce from Q0 to Q1. Right? So when the price of T increases, tengok yang satu lagi tu, yeah, price of T increases, demand for coffee increase. So the demand curve will shift to the right. And then explain lah. Okay, after the shift, price increases, quantity increase. Okay, Price of car increases, the demand for petrol decrease. Ah, contoh yang ni. Ah, ini kan. Okay. And then explain. The demand curve shift to the left. Okay. Price will decrease and quantity will decrease. Okay. So dia bukan shift simultaneous ya. Satu situasi maknanya dia shift satu sahaja. Kalau dia bagi dua situasi baru awak shift kedua-duanya. Faham tak? So bila dia bagi satu sahaja, siap biasanya awak tahulah ni determinant apa, determinant apa macam tu. Kalau dia uh, income determinants of demand, maknanya demand saja shift. Ya. Yeah? Kalau determinant of supply, supply saja shift. Unless dia bagi dua situasi pada masa yang sama, then baru ada dua shift lah untuk kedua-dua curve itu. Okey boleh faham tak? Nampak tak sekarang ni? Boleh. Faham ni dah. Okay boleh ni eh boleh refer to the uh, sample yang saya bagi lah. Contoh jawapan yang saya bagi tu. Okay. 
So now kita nak continue dengan intervention. Ya, yeah, government intervention. Right. Um, equilibrium price and quantity itu biasanya uh, berlaku secara natural. Ya, yeah, market. Ya, berlaku secara natural sebab pasaran. Pasaran ni memang demand and supply tu turun naik tu biasa. Harga naik turun tu perkara biasa lah. Ya. Tetapi sometimes price might be too low atau price might be too high. Terlalu tinggi atau terlalu rendah. So bila harga ini tidak begitu tetap jadi government akan intervene. Akan masuk campur dan fix the price. Control the price. Okay. So government intervention ni ada dua jenis iaitu price control atau non-price control. Okay so hari ni kita akan tengok hanya kepada price control sahaja. Okay right so sometimes government might think that okay harga barang-barang commodity, essential commodity ini terlalu tinggi dan dia akan harm consumer. So because of that government fix the price to consumer. And sometimes government think that the price is too low and it will harm producer. Harga barang terlalu rendah dan dia akan menyebabkan producer bermasalah. Jadi government akan intervene and fix the price. So basically untuk non-price control, there are two types of price control which are price ceiling atau kita panggil sebagai maximum price and price floor kita panggil sebagai minimum price. Okay. So cuba kita tengok price ceiling. Right. So what is price ceiling? So price ceiling, yeah, government impose regulation that prevents the prices from rising above a maximum level set by government. Okay. So kenapa government impose price ceiling? Sebab government rasakan bahawa Barang-barang, harga barang-barang essential commodity terlalu tinggi. Harga sugar tinggi, harga oil tinggi, harga rice tinggi, harga fish tinggi, harga chicken tinggi. So government rasa oh mahal. Then dia akan affect consumer. So government come and implement impose price ceiling. So price ceiling ni nak bantu siapa? Nak bantu consumer supaya harga barang itu terkawal. Lebih murah supaya produce, consumer mampu membeli. So biasanya harga price ceiling ini diletakkan di bawah harga equilibrium. It will be set below the equilibrium price. Contohnya this is supply, this is demand, this is the equilibrium price kan? Okay. So di manakah harga itu ter, uh, akan uh, price ceiling akan di akan uh, apa ni implemented di bawah eh bawah harga equilibrium at P1. So boleh tak producer jual at P star? Tak boleh lah. Walaupun harga dalam market P star tetapi tidak boleh sebab harga dia tinggi. Government set nak tak nak kau kena jual P1 juga. Ha, jadi producer jual P1. So bila harga itu lebih rendah, consumer mampu membeli barang tersebut. Tetapi berlaku masalah shortage. Yeah, sebab demand will be greater than supply. Okay. So apa kebaikannya? They will actually uh, benefit consumer the most. Right? Because now consumer can buy the essential commodities at cheaper price. So they are better off. For example, kalau lah harga 1 kilogram ayam RM8.50. Tapi government merasakan, oh this is very expensive sebab orang miskin tak boleh beli. Yeah, then government intervene and uh, set the meat maximum price at 750 per kg. Jadi government kata, okay producer you have to sell at 750. Tak boleh jual lebih dari 750. So nak tak nak producer kena ikut. Jadi harganya lebih murah lah sekarang, betul tak? Jadi seringgit perbezaan. Dulu 8.5 sekarang ni uh, 7.5. So seringgit adalah benefit kepada consumer. So consumer can buy the goods at cheaper price, at lower price and it also will help the poor, poor people lah. So now the poor people can afford to buy the essential commodities. Right? Itu kebaikan. Tetapi ada keburukan ni, disadvantages. So the first one, bila harga barang terlalu rendah, 
dia akan merugikan producer. So what producer will do is that producer dia akan engage in illegal market. Contohnya dia jual kat Malaysia dia tak dapat untung so dia seludup ke luar negara. So they will smuggle the goods to the neighboring country and sell the goods at much higher price. So bila dia jual lebih mahal di negara luar dia dapat untung. Tapi berlakulah masalah di mana kekurangan shortage berlaku di dalam negara Malaysia. Okay. And then yang kedua, producer bila dia rasa tak untung, dia akan cut the production even more. So bila dia cut the production, there will be a problem of severe shortage. Berlakulah masalah kekurangan yang agak banyak di dalam negara. And then it is seems uh, it seems unfair to producer. Bila government impose price floor, a uh, price ceiling, ya harga lebih murah, jadi rugilah kepada producer. Dan akhir sekali, producer might engage in illegal activities such as hoarding. What is hoarding? Hoarding ni aktiviti menyorokkan barang. Ya, barang ada tapi disorok. Kenapa disorok? Sebab dia nak create artificial shortage. Maknanya kalau ada, dia tak ke, barang tu tak berkurangan tetapi dia buat-buat berkurangan. So that dia nak force government to increase the price. So dia akan hoard ataupun dia akan sorokkan barang. So cara nak sorokkan barang tu hari perayaan lah. Dekat-dekat nak hari raya, dekat-dekat nak bulan puasa dia sorok barang supaya government increase the price of goods and services. Okay contohnya. Ya yeah, supaya harga barang dinaikkan. So activity hoarding ini adalah illegal dan dia berdosa. Ya yeah, dalam agama Islam tidak membenarkan menyorokkan barang. Okay. So that is price ceiling. Right. So kita tengok pula price floor. What is price floor? So the price floor adalah maximum, uh, adalah minimum price, sorry. Price floor adalah minimum price. So kenapa government impose minimum price? Sebab government nak bantu producer. Tadi consumer, now dia nak bantu producer. Okay, so it is uh, price that imposed by government. Ya, yeah? uh, ataupun kita kata it is uh, imposed regulation, government imposed regulation that prevents the price from falling below the minimum level set by government. So government tak nak harga barang tu lagi turun sebab dia akan merugikan producer dan government set minimum price. Ya yeah, government akan banyak bantu siapa? Biasanya farmer lah ya yeah, in agriculture sector sebab agriculture sector ni harga barang dia tidak begitu tetap uncertain. Ya yeah, sometimes very high, sometimes very low. So dia uncertain jadi government fix the minimum price. Okay. So harga barang ya yeah, fix below the equilibrium price uh, sorry above the equilibrium price. The price floor is set above the equilibrium price. So this is the price star. Ni adalah harga equilibrium. Tetapi bila government rasa oh harga terlalu rendah untuk producer then government naikkan harga ya yeah, set the price floor at P1. So boleh tak kita beli harga P1 tak boleh lah sebab dia dah set regulation. Kita kena beli at P1. Okay, so bila harga tu di lebih mahal, berlakulah surplus. Ya, yeah, berlaku lebihan barang. Orang tak beli sangatlah. Okay, contohnya macam padi lah, padi. Government memang akan set price floor. So harga beras biasanya lebih mahal. Tetapi of course lah government bantu juga consumer. So bila harga mahal tu, uh, government bagi subsidi pula pada consumer supaya consumer mampu membeli pula. Ya, yeah, so price of padi ni memang dia ada set price floor lah. Okay, right. Ada satu lagi konsep yang sama yang kita boleh apply dalam price flow adalah uh, konsep uh, minimum wage. Ya yeah, minimum wage. Kadar upah yang minimum. So minimum wage ni memang government akan uh, setiap tahun uh, dalam bajet ataupun beberapa tahun sekali government akan revise minimum wage. Okay biasanya government akan naikkan ikut kepada kadar kemiskinan. Kalau kadar kemiskinan, kalau kita uh, poverty line itu Uh, tinggi dan government akan naikkan minimum wage. Maknanya minimum wage ni adalah lowest paid by their employers to workers to protect from exploitation. Maknanya setiap majikan perlu bayar at least minimum wage dan ke atas. Tidak boleh kurang dari itu. Okay. So dia akan membantu ya reduce poverty, dia bantu untuk increase standard of living kepada uh, golongan uh, kepada pekerja lah. Okay. Right. 
So konsep of minimum wage ni disama dengan konsep price floor. So boleh tengok uh, dalam textbook page 115. Page 115. Okay, saya share sini juga dalam WhatsApp group. <coughs> okay, boleh tengoklah uh, contohnya um, minimum wage pada uh, satu satu uh, before this kita kata before this minimum wage adalah seribu seribu saja. Okay, so bila government merasa oh terlalu sedikit lah ya ramai orang susah dan government decided to increase the minimum wage to 1200 okey so apa yang berlaku di sini berlaku lebihan surplus surplus tu apa surplus tu adalah bermaksud surplus of labor berlakulah lebihan pekerja ya di mana menyebabkan unemployment pengangguran okey sebab bila gaji tu tinggi dia merupakan kos kepada producer lah. Producer merasakan oh kos dah meningkat. Jadi dia kurang ambil pekerja. Bila kurang ambil pekerja berlakulah masalah unemployment. Okay. So itulah konsep in, uh, price floor ni kita boleh guna dalam minimum wage juga. Okay. Apa kebaikan? Apa advantages kebaikan uh, price floor adalah dia akan membantu producer. So the income of producer will be protected. And then government juga dia akan keep ataupun dia akan store surplus ya eh, barang-barang yang ada lebihan ini sometimes government gunakan, beli dan gunakan untuk beri pada orang miskin macam beras. And then lower paid work worker are better off lah sekarang ni minimum wage meningkat jadi dia uh, standard of living dia meningkat. Ya. Yeah. Apa keburukan? Keburukan kepada consumer. Consumer dia kena bayar banyak untuk uh, beli barang tersebut and then there will be uh, apa kita panggil waste of resources. Kenapa? Sebab berlaku banyak lebihan. Lebihan barang tu tak terjual jadi kita dah uh, membazirkan uh, apa ni sumber yang ada untuk produce barang yang tidak terjual tersebut. And then increase in wage lead to the more problem of unemployment. Macam dekat Malaysia kita compete. ya yeah, Foreign worker compete dengan local worker. Okay. Untuk minimum wage local worker sahaja yang terbabit. Ya yeah, tetapi kalau foreign worker dia tidak subject ya yeah, is uh, they they not subject to uh, minimum wage. Maknanya mereka, mereka tidak uh, tertakluk di bawah uh, this law lah. So ha, gaji berapa saja tak kisah untuk foreign worker. So di sini majikan akan lihat kalau dia hire foreign worker maka cost dia lebih rendah berbanding dengan local worker. So competition among foreign and local worker ini okay. Uh, itulah menyebabkan uh, local worker, kita panggil unemployment kepada local worker di Malaysia. Okay, so that is among the advantage and disadvantages of um, price floor. Okay, so kalau price control ini dah dua ni lah. Ya, yeah, price ceiling dan price floor. Okay, any question nak tanya? Tak ada. Boleh faham tak konsep ni? Faham ni dah. Okay. So kalau nak faham memang kena buat latihan lah. Eh? Kena buat latihan dalam textbook ni. Okay. Boleh tengok page 131. 131. Short answer question 1. And page 133. Number 5. So question 1 and number 5. Ini adalah contoh soalan yang awak kena uh, apa ni cari market equilibrium dan dia ada soalan price control di situ. Okey. Pada hari kita ada kelas Rabu ni. So Rabu ni uh, saya nak buat discussion lah ya. Discussion sikit uh, berkenaan dengan tu lah latihan yang kita you all dah buat. Saya tak buat lagi kan discussion kan ya. Yeah. So kita akan discuss lah latihan insyaAllah pada hari Rabu. Okay. Boleh tak buat soalan yang dua tu? Yang mana Wina? Soalan satu dan soalan lima. Okay okay. Okay. Okay boleh buat and then tak kalau tak faham tolong whatsapp saya lah. Whatsapp dalam group. Senang semua saya boleh explain sekali. 
Satu dengan lima je madam. Satu dengan lima je. Okay. Eh? So cuba buat sekarang. Kalau tak faham nanti boleh tanya dalam group. Okay? Setakat itu sajalah saya nak ajar hari ni. Saya takut macam banyak sangat awak tak faham pula nanti. 